Operations on 3.215 megahertz. Our mailing address is WWCR 1300 WWCR Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee 37218, USA. Got your farm tractors uh, ready to go. Got that diesel engine warmed up. Got that gasoline engine warmed up. You ready to plow some ground of truth? Because that's what Classic Redneck Radio is going to do. You want to join forces with us? You start with the key of David. You got to start that tractor. And it's called the key of David. And all the preachers of the earth, and all, I mean all, because you can't catch them continually preaching and shouting from the rooftops, the fear of your maker. The key of David is the fear of your maker, the eternal one, the only begotten son. We have to be afraid of him. It's a huge, it's the mystery, it's the salt covenant, it's the secret of how you overcome all things. And uh, so, if your tractor's ready to go... We'll start plowing some truth tonight on Classic Redneck Radio from sea to shining sea, all 50 states. You didn't know America were two ancient words and it means kingdom heaven, but you know this nation was blessed more than any other nation. You know that for certain. But did you know there were 50 golden colored rings holding up the veil of the temple? And the veil is made or comprised of ten curtains, like the Ten Commandments. Hmm? Fifty states, three thousand people received the Ruach HaKadosh. Remember the 120 in the upper room waiting in, in peace, Yahweh Salem, in the upper place of understanding, the higher place of understanding. And it came in as a mighty wind and cloven tongues of fire. That's uh, very interesting, isn't it? Because fear fell on all how many? 3,000. How many counties in America? Just a little more than 3,000. How many people died at 9-11? 3,000. How many people died in the desert floor because they were doing, well, all sorts of nasty, uh, satanical, pagan things? And uh, 3,000 people died at the hand of the Levites. Lewi, pronounced properly. There's no V in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, but they, you know, the Babylonian Jewish, the Jesuit J, and they have, they, they, they established what was to be called uh, the Hebrew tongue, you see. It's only new, it's such recent, recent. And, uh, of course, they have the V sound. So you hear some of these preachers say, Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Yahweh. Got your teeth touching your bottom lip. Yahweh. Eh, wrong. And uh, his name is as oil poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Sound of breath in is Yah. To your lungs are full. Sound of breath out is Wah. Which means her, she, or wisdom. That's why we're the five wise virgins. Because we speak only that which we hear from our Abba. Now you know the mystery of the bride and the bridegroom. We speak only that which we hear, which is the Petros and the rock. That's the ability to hear the still small voice of Simon Kepha and Christ, the anointed one, the only begotten son, the king of all kings, my big bro, said to Simon Kepha, he said, flesh and blood has not told you, but my Abba has told you upon this, this rock, this Petros, that you could hear his voice, I will build my assemblies. 
Now you know there's a problem in America, isn't there? And now you see why you're cursed with a curse. And uh, by the way, New York City has, as I told you was going to happen, I told you these things were happening. We're going to, uh, Sam, don't forget, please force me to talk about dogs, okay? Okay. All right, we're going to talk about rats. Rats. They got them on the West Coast, and uh, they got the plague there. And now in New York City, in the boroughs of New York City, uh, the rats are everywhere. You walk down the sidewalk, and they're crawling across everything. Uh, they're getting into all sorts of things, and they're moving uh, in the in the direction towards the rich uh, homes or apartments or skyscrapers, whatever you want. And they're, I mean, they're inhabiting everything. Uh, terrible, terrible. Uh, the garbage truck guys, they have to seal up in like a, a hazmat suit kind of thing and have to roll the windows up in the truck and, and block all the, all the holes in the truck there so they couldn't get inside because when they go to dump the garbage, just thousands pour out of the trash and, uh, they're literally, the rats are literally, they're growing, they're larger and they're walking on the sidewalk like they're pedestrians who own the place. So this is what you get when you are the city of Mystery Babylon and your governor says it's okay to murder little children. That's, that's acceptable. And after they're out of the womb, if you make a mistake as an abortionist and you didn't quite, you know, suck the brains out of them and crush them, uh, and they're still alive and the heart's beating, you have the right to, you know, to do whatever you have to do to kill them, you know. So, uh, you know, this is, this is what you're getting. West Coast, East Coast. And it's going to spread because the heartland of America, uh, the Southern Bible Belt, the, you're the you know the the Midwest. It's it's up to you now. You're the you're the scum buckets. You're the peasants. You're the low lives. You're the outcasts, and you're the ones. I'm not talking about preachers now, or rabbis, or teachers, or policemen, or lawyers, or doctors, or judges. You. Peasants, scum buckets, goyim, Gentiles. When you find out what Gentile really means, it means they don't want you to know this. You have royal blood going through your veins as a peasant, scum bucket, goyim, Gentile. You have royal blood going through your... You are of the stock of Abraham. You have the 12 tribes of Israel. America is Israel. And the land over there in the Middle East is the seat, S-E-A-T, of Satan. Easily proven. It's in the Bible. And you can see their behavior. I mean, the global capital for, you know, LGBT, and, you know, they have their parades, their gay pride parade and everything. Uh, it's, it's not hard to see once the scales are off your eyes. You can see through the glass more clearly when you understand the Old Testament, the first five books of the Bible are the five wise virgins and that's written on the tables of our hearts and minds because we wrote two copies as every king must do in Deuteronomy chapter 17 you have to write two copies and you'll end, you'll end up writing Yahweh's name 39 times when you make the two copies one for the doorpost one for you to keep in your hand more precious than the Bible and when you do this it becomes the books of remembrance Malachi 3.16, those who fear Yahweh and spake often one to another about the fear and thought upon the proper pronunciation of his name. Yahweh only listens to us. He hearkens only to those who fear him. And he causes a book of remembrance to be written for all those who fear him. And that's the copy of the Torah. And then on the day of judgment, in the book of Revelation, when, he op when the day of judgment comes, he's going to open up the books. They don't tell you this in cemetery school. You're going to open up the books. It's not the 66 books of the Bible. It's the, it's the copy of the Torah every king must write. And you're a royal king, David, priesthood. Priesthood, Le Levitical. Everybody's got to be of the Levitical character. Levitical char Leeway, properly pronounced. You have to be of that character. Daughter of Leeway, a son of Leeway. Even though there's 12 tribes and they have four different mothers, four hair colors, four eye colors, one father, Yaakov Israel, you still, all of you, he's coming for a royal priesthood. Christ is the highest priest you can get. He's the judge. He's the advocate. He's the great lawyer. He's the great physician. He's the, he's the judge of judges. The creator of all things. He's the word made flesh. He's the Torah in the flesh. Died. Remove the death penalty from his own authorship, the Torah. He removed the death penalty so that the marriage could be easy, easier kept. Not just as saying, well, I removed the death penalty, now it ought to be easy. No, he gives you 
power from on high in he endues you as in the upper room with 120 endues you puts the power inside of you and that power is authority and it grows over over the time of conversion which takes seven years seven years it's not I remember when I was born again in this hotel room, I was born again, put my hand on the television set. Or, you know, I was at Billy Graham Crusade and I came down out of the highest seat in the auditorium in the Coliseum and I went down and got my literature. My life changed right there. No, it didn't. You were called then. Many means most of you were called. That's not saved. You were called. Many are called. Few are chosen. He says he didn't choose you because you didn't choose his Torah. He says, the fools hated knowledge and rejected my Torah, my law, and I will reject you and your children and your land. So now we know. Now we know what they're not telling you in religion. By the way, we study words and the root meaning of words, religion means slavery. You're a slave to the carnal commandments of men, doctrines of demons, and the calendar of Satan Lucifer is the calendar of Pope Gregory and Julius Caesar. And the seven hills of the whore are the seven days of the week. Can't, it's irrefutable. Can't gainsay this. You don't say when you're talking about hump day, witch's day, Odin's day, wooden's day, that's where you get knock on wood from, stupid. That's pagan. Knock on wood, it's going to be all right. Stupid. That's a pagan demon action. Like clicking of the glasses when you're, when you're toasting someone. They're, you're getting toasted in the lake of fire. You don't say, well, uh, I'll meet you at 3 o'clock in Wednesday. You see, they're mountains. They're hills of the whore. The seven hills of the harlot. The whole world keeps the calendar of Satan. It's the broad highway that leads to death and destruction. Your birth certificate bond trust incorporates your name and you become a corpse. That's why you have to appear in court. And you need a mediator, you need a lawyer, a mouthpiece to speak for you. You're appearing as a dead person. You don't know all these secrets. You say, I'll meet you at 3 o'clock on Wednesday. See? Right in front of you. You're walking by the, by the pathway of Satan. You're following the, the commandments of men and the doctrines of demons, traditions of men. And you think it's righteousness. We all swim in the grace. Thank you, Christ, for the grace. Thank you for the grace, Abba Yahweh. Thank you for the grace. Unmerited favor, compassion, long-suffering, kindness. But you see, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, ignorance. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have any armor on. Ephesians 6 is a joke. And he says to you, I winked at your ignorance, but now require all men to repent. And repentance leads to the word fear Yahweh, which is a sore a phobia, shaking, quaking, baking fear. And that will stop you to the quick and breaking his Torah, breaking his calendar, you will press in towards the mark of perfection. We all fall short of the esteem, but it gives us that, that grace to learn the knowledge of our Abba, to become Christ. We're in Christ, we become Christ. We become the body of Christ, we become part of him. And he is the living, breathing Bible. And there was no New Testament. It was the Torah, the Tanakh, that was what he said when he raised the Torah in the house of the name of the temple. And he said, these words bear testimony of him. Now you know why in Revelation it says we overcome by what? Blood of the Lamb and the words of the, what? Not New Testament. The words of the Old Testament, that's the testimony, stupid. And we love Yahweh, and we keep His Torah. We do it. Keep means guard. Do. Keep it. Guard it. Do it. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works. We walk by faith, not by television sight. Tell the lie vision sight. We walk by faith. We hear the still, small voice. Petros. And he says, when you fear Him, you're going to hear Him only if you fear Him. That's the key that opens up the door. To the heart of Christ. 
When you fear him, you'll hear him. Then you're going to learn. Remember, grow in the knowledge of the Creator while you're growing in the grace. Fear, hear, learn, obey. It's so simple. He that hath a singular ear, because right now you've got to listen by your plural ears. He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit saith. But if you have the raw hakados, the set apart breath of truth, and you're one of the wise virgins, you have wisdom coming out of your mouth like Slomo, like Solomon, you're going to be able to hear him in the new heart of flesh he makes for you. And in Hebrews chapter 8, the blood covenant, he writes the Old Testament on the tables of your hearts and minds. And the word heart, he that has an, has an, has an ear, revelation, singular, let him hear. The word heart has ear in it. The word fear has ear in it. Learn has ear in it. Near has ear in it. Earth has ear inside of it. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. They're not teaching you all these things because if, if you start learning these things and you, you, you get, are given the key of David, the fear of Yahweh, which is the candlestick that lights the other six, you don't need the preacher, the prophet in his farm. You don't need the pastor, the evangelist, the imam. You don't need any of these people. The cardinal, the pope, the father, the priest, the rabbi. You don't need them. Because the greatest rabbi is the creator of all things. He who made the uni, united verse. Universe. The united verse. What is it? The spirit of Yahweh fell on the face of the deep. What's that united verse? He created space, time, and matter. First few words in the book of Bereshith, Genesis. The beginning of the Torah. What is that universe? The spirit of Yahweh fell on the face of the deep. That's the fear of Yahweh, stupid! All atoms, all quarks, all antimatter, everything, protons, neutrons, everything, microbes, disease, um, everything, proteins, everything. Amino acids, everything, atomic weaponry, everything, cells in a dead person, everything's made to fear Yahweh. The sea will not pass its bounds because it fears Yahweh. He tells it, yeah, okay, flood him over there, flood him over there. He tells it, okay, melt the ice, raise the ocean. It's real simple. And you don't even know the fear because the devil wants you not to know the fear. And the devil, while even the demons, watch, fear and tremble. <laughs> you get it now? They know when you don't fear Yahweh, they got you over a barrel. You can be infected by those demons in a heartbeat. And the devil's more subtle. Lucifer, Satan, he's more subtle than all the beasts of the field. So you've been, you've been bullshipped right from... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve generations back. Bullshit. This so called country of yours was long ago bankrupt, infiltrated, and turned into corporations, and foreign people own you. Everything. No pun intended, lock, stock, and barrel. Ever hear of property taxes? You're taxed all over the way, all over the place. Taxation. <laughs> Without representation, that's where you are. Slavery, religion. And the preachers are watchmen on the walls who, uh, they're called dumb dogs that cannot bark about these issues. You see, once they preach the fear to you over a conversion period of seven years, because all your cells have to be renewed, you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, see, your own. The word of salvation is sent to those who fear Yahweh. Scripture in the book of Acts. Hundreds of these scriptures, by the way. The secret of Yahweh is with them that fear him. He makes the covenant of marriage known to them. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. So what the hell are you preaching, Mr. Peter? What are you preaching, Rabbi? Huh? Are you telling them to fear the fact they don't bring you money and put it in the damn... Balaam brass plate? Is that what you teach him? Is that what you're teaching him? Is that what you say? Oh, you don't come to a farm? Is that what you're telling him? You gotta come to a farm? To 
a tabernacle? Uh Uh-uh. The good news, the everlasting good news, is found in the kingdom message of Revelation 14.6. Saying with a loud voice, Fear Yahweh. Worship Him and give esteem unto Him as our judgment has come for you, America. You're screwed now. The only way around this is repentance so us peasants yeah, I'm going to include myself in the bunch because I'm here to guard for the souls of men. And I'm a peasant that's rising up in the power of the Ruach HaKadosh. Yeah, I'm here. The key of David is the fear of Yahweh. And the only creation that was made without the fear, according to Job, Job chapter 41, verse 32 and 33, the king of pride, never say the word pride, Say, I'm well pleased in you. The creator of heaven and earth didn't say, this is my only begotten son who I'm really damn proud of. He's boss. He's, he's cool. No. This is my only begotten son whom I'm well pleased. Never tell your children, I'm proud of you, boy. Kid, I'm proud of you, kid. Go. So. Hasatan, Lucifer, Leviathan. The only one created by the creator of heaven and earth, made without the fear of Yahweh, his creator. uh, Lucifer doesn't fear God. He knows the power of it, because the demons fear. But Lucifer was the the only one created without the fear of Yahweh. And Yahweh made him that way on purpose, so you would have free will. He knew the devil was going to fall. He planned it. He did all this for his good pleasure. The Almighty did. Yahweh. He knew the whole deal. He knew the beginning from the end. He's not stupid like you are. He's not ignorant like you are. He's not stupid like your preachers who are dumb dogs who cannot bark about this message. The fear of Yahweh is clean. Happy is the man who feareth Yahweh always. Oh, you'll say Lord and God until you get your diapers off. Stop sucking on the teat of 2% milk of Christianity and Messianics and Judaism and psychology and philosophy and New Agers and Wiccan and all that other crap. Masons and they can't do anything to you once you start learning the fear of Yahweh. That's how you get anointed. Fear Yahweh and you will live. Give back what you've robbed and give again the pledge. Put away your wickedness, your Torahless ways, your lawless ways. Over five million laws in America. Laws too grievous to bear. And you liars, you liars, say all things are possible through Christ who strengthens me. But you damnable liars, saying you can't do that Old Testament. It's so easy to keep that when he gives you power from on high and he endues you with it and he's my teacher, he's my rabbi, he pulled it off by fearing his father. It says so in Hebrews chapter 5, he was acquainted with sorrow and grief and was known to fear his father. That's what you're going to feel. You're going to be rejected of men. You're going to be spoken of as evil, all matter of evil against you falsely for his calendar, for his namesake, for righteousness of the Torah. Count it all for joy. All your tears are turned into joyful, glorious victory. Don't let it bother you. Because the jig is just about up, believe me. Nothing can be covered now. Everything is going to be revealed. The only way you're covered is in the blood of the Lamb. He blots out your sin. He overlooks your faults. Because he knows the end of you from the beginning as he knew the end of this nation and the beginning of this nation and the beginning of all things and the end of all things and the Spirit of Yahweh fell on the face of the deep and it's the first candlestick of the seven spirits that lights up the rest of the spirits of Yahweh. Fear. It's clean. Happy is a man who feareth always. The candle that lights up knowledge of Yahweh, wisdom of Yahweh, counsel, understanding, more supernatural power, and the seventh spirit, love, 
of the aforementioned spirits. The law, the Torah, the teachings, the instructions, they are a fence around us. To keep you in as sheep in righteousness so you don't wander. And the fence is there to keep the devil out. He'll come for a season. And one of those white picket fence swords sticks him right where the sun don't shine no more. That's right. We're not fighting flesh and blood here. We're not fighting each other. We're fighting spirits. And you don't have any equipment. And that's a fact. If you had equipment, you'd have never let this thing get so bad as it is. If you had the Ruach HaKadosh, you call it the Catholic Hindu word holy. That's a kaka word. I'm not blaspheming. Holy is a pronunciation of the Hindu goddess. Holy with an I instead of a Y. It is correctly the spirit of truth, the Ruach HaKadosh, the set apart breath of truth. That's why we're kings. We sit on thrones and we make declarations as kings. We bind and loose heaven and earth. That's the authority we have. And the angels of Yahweh's righteousness encamp about us. As in Psalm 91. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We make that. We live there. That's our habitation. No evil shall come nigh thy dwelling. No pestilence shall come nigh thy dwelling. All these things. That hedge of protection. Those angels. With fiery swords. They'll kill them. Touch not my anointed. The anointing comes when you fear your maker. It's the greatest mystery and secret. And it's in the Bible 300 times plus. The secret and mystery of Christ and why he never broke not one jot or tittle of the Torah is that he feared unto death his father. You will be acquainted with sorrow and grief. The world will hate you and you will hate the world. You will, you will eschew evil and you will guard for the souls of the saints, your fellow brethren who are laborers, getting down deep and moving the tear words and finding the truth and the root meaning of words. Those laborers are few and far between for the harvest of word truth is plentiful. We need to plow some ground. It's time to plow some ground. These preachers are going to bullshit you, and they've been bullshitting you, and they will continue to do smooth speeches to you. Make you feel all pepped up. All pepped up, going nowhere. It's kind of like, you know, the prosperity preacher, the, um, the positive power of positive thinking preaching. You know, power of positive thinking preaching. Victory, right? And they're billionaires, right? They got your mo. You buy their damn books with their picture on it. They're on tell the live vision machine, and they're breaking the Torah like crazy. And now, the mark of the beast is your photograph of your damn face, and it's the measurement of a man. Thirty-six node measurement on your driver's license, twenty twenty real ID. The image speaks. They're going to ask for your first, middle, and last name, your birth certificate, bond trust name, your incorporated death certificate. Your birth certificate is your death certificate. That's why they always ask you, DOB, because they own your ass. They own you. Lock, stock, and barrel. And you're sitting there with the truth right in front of you. And they're going to tell you repeatedly, Pep talks. Pep talks. Smooth. Smooth things. Smooth stuff. No truth. And then, because you're so prideful, and so arrogant, and so Laodicea and lukewarm, blind as a bat, blind bat leading the blind bat in the caves of destruction, pestilence in there, you think you're rich, you don't need anything. Got it all figured out. We love Jesus, you gnashing teeth, children of you. Jesus, gnash your teeth some more with the false name of the Jesuits. 
Less that pronunciation is less than 500 years old. They got you by the Kahuni hairs, man. They got the devil got you. You need to come out of her, my people. Be not a partaker of her sins in her place. You need to move, man. New York City's the great mystery Babylon whore city. Everything comes out of there. The Jews are in Brooklyn, right? Morgan Stanley and all these outfits, all these but Wells Fargo, all these outfits. The Jews with the beards handling the money, the mo, the treasury bag. And they got the perforated flute in there. Judas Iscariot had the treasury bag. He had a perforated flute in there. Then you move over and listen to the Jews. They will not. Before Christ came, they burned a rabbi alive and said, you can't say the name of Yahweh. And when Christ was born, they wanted to stone him because he said he was Yahweh's son. The disciples, the taught ones, preached the kingdom and the reign of Yahweh's at hand. Repent, right? They wanted to put them in prison. Now let's fast forward to today. You can't say Yahweh in Israel. You'll be going to jail. You got this figured out yet? Have you got it figured out? Now you go over to Ezekiel 36 and he says to you, the ignorant children, the religious ones, think you're righteous. You're not. You're not even close. He says, Thou hast profaned my set-apart name whither you went amongst the heathen. He says it four times in there. Ezekiel 36, Yehezekiel. Thou hast profaned my set-apart name whither you went amongst the heathen. Profane means to play like a perforated flute. To pronounce his name any damn way you want to. Judas Iscariot, the treasury money guy, the only Jew of the twelve of the twelve disciples, the other disciples were of the youngest son of, of, of Jacob Benjamin. Benjamites. Paul was a Benjamite. The only Jew was Judas Iscariot, the betrayer. He had the perforated flute inside the money bag. They will not allow you to say the name. The Jews who are our brothers and sisters are being taught by the Jews who are not of us. They're not of us. They're being taught. Our brothers and sisters in Yehuda, tribe of Yehuda, Jews, are being taught never to say the name Yahweh. You have to say Hashem, which means the name, or Adonai, which means the Lord. Yet, the whole Torah, the entire Psalms, to heal them, Proverbs, tells you how we are supposed to sing and not be ashamed of the name that is above all names. Let all that have breath praise the name, sing the name, Yahweh, the sound of the ram's horn, calls the assemblies in the book of Psalms. If my people and the whole world are hearing this message, who are called by the name of Yahweh, if you will humble yourselves, get on your knees and repent, put on sackcloth, and put away your toilist, lewd, lascivious, licentious ways, your covetousness, your television, your motion pictures, your Hollywood, your lying preachers who are, who are telling you it's all right to be on Facebooker. Put away your wicked ways. Humble yourself and pray without ceasing. He will heal your body, your land is you. Eventually, if there be 50 men in America who are righteous and repentant, keeping the calendar of Yahweh according to the sun, the moon, and the stars, 50 states, 50 men, Abraham prophesied about you, America. Moshe was on Mount Nebo. He saw your future. He saw the promised land, America, from sea to shining sea. Hepzibah land, Beulah land, 50 states. He saw the future from Mount Nebo. And Yahweh said, go to Mount Nebo. See the future. You're not going there. But I want you to die. So Moses, Moshe, gave up the ghost on Mount Nebo. You just think you're a Christian nation? You're a Christian nation. You ain't close to even being righteous anymore. You started out as a two-horned lamb, it says, in the Bible. 400 plus years ago. Actually goes back 3,000 years ago when Jeremiah came here and the tribe of Dan, the way markers were set. 
However, in the beginning of America, let's look at your fathers, you children of today. They kept the Old Testament. Pioneers 10 miles away from each other. Homesteaders. They kept the Torah law. And that's the foundation of your, your entire blessings. You have exhausted the blessings of all those men and families before you who kept the Torah, man. And they were sincere. They feared. They preached the fear. The resume was not some damn written document. A man would know you and they'd say, Johnny Smith, in the whole world, judging America and judging all the angels. And you just tell that lying spirit, because we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're not doing that. And when they laugh at you and mock you and speak all manner of evil against you falsely, you go back home, get on your damn farm tractor, start plowing some land, turn it over, baby. Babylonians, we're going to turn you over. Babylon, confusion's falling. Billy Redneck's here now. Turning this over. Turning this ground over. You go back, you get on your farm tractor. And the Almighty says, Say these words while you're driving your farm track. Ain't nobody around. Heaven and earth is bearing witness. The angels are encamped about you. And he says, I want you to dispatch an angel. And this is what I want the angel to do. Because you become a little Christ. You're a little king. He's the king of all of us kings. And he says, say these words. And he does the vengeance. He does, he does all of the work. The battle is his. All you get to do is be a heralder. And you make the judgments known. You bind and loose heaven and earth. And you speak the words. It's called the rule of Hakadosh. The set apart breath of truth. And you announce the judgment. And then you see what happens to those men who want to do this. I told you. All of creation is groaning for the revealing of the most powerful sons of Yahweh. The ones who have the Ruach HaKadosh. Not this false, sloppy agape, greasy grace, saccharine love, Christianity. We are to ensue evil. We are to take evil down with supernatural power. And that's the truth. Can't do it with a gun. Not going to work. These demons have laser beams and directed energy weapons and lies through the legal system. And their soldiers of revenue have guns. And I mean policemen here. And these men I'm speaking of, these women, are our brothers and sisters. But they're ignorant. They believe what they're doing is right. From one perspective, putting ourselves in their shoes, look at it. This whole world is such a lie. It's so corrupt. Imagine being a policeman. You got the laws of demon man, demon filled men, demon filled lawyers and politicians, five million plus laws in America. Only 759 Old Testament laws, so easy to keep. It's ridiculous with his power from on high and his forgiveness. And he's our rabbi teacher. I'm speaking of Christ. He writes the Torah on the tables of our hearts and minds, the marriage covenant in Hebrews chapter 8, and the renewed covenant of marriage, the New Testament. And so these policemen, they come up against people who are drug infested. I think the policemen... All of them should get together and say, we ain't putting up with this bullshit no more. How come, how come Bush was bringing with military planes and Clinton in Arkansas and Texas? How come he's bringing in the, uh, the drugs from over in uh, Afghanistan and pumping them in America? Why, why didn't the policemen go and take all those politicians out? Lock them up, I mean. Take them out of, out of business. Arrest them. Citizens can arrest. Why weren't they arresting them? 
because you want your mo, your money, your retirement, your 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 pension, your social security. You want the you want to wear your uniform, and your wife thinks you're really handsome, and your head's been shaved like a Roman soldier. Did you know that shaving your head is what the Romans did? The Roman soldiers shaved their heads so you couldn't pull their hair in a fight. Yeah, you're Roman now. You're Roman Greco. Your Christianity is Roman. In the Bible, Christianity is mentioned, I think, three times. And it's the Roman soldiers who are saying a derogatory statement to the witnesses of Yahweh. Christ said you're to be called witnesses of the still small voice, the Petros Rock. He didn't say, you be called Christians. I will call you Christians. No. We're witnesses of the still small voice. The pioneers of old. Who knew how to fear their maker and keep the Old Testament. They were given supernatural help. The angels encamped about them. They built those stone walls in all your pastures and fields. They worked a gluteus maximus off, lived to be about 45, 50 years old. They worked so hard. You're 70, 80, 90 years old. Why? Because of all the dues they paid for this nation called America, Kingdom Heaven. And you have, because of your preachers, evangelists, teachers, doctors, lawyers, judges, policemen, military even, you have squandered the greatest foundation ever created in all of creation and will never be one like this ever again. America! Your foundation has been taken away. The foundation is the fear of Yahweh. And this is what your fathers did. And if you don't turn now and do what your fathers did and preach and shout from the rooftops, as Matthew 10 says, and Christ commands you, every preacher, every preacher, every rabbi, every patriot broadcaster, no matter what your religion, you ought to preach the fear. So the peasants, the poor, the maimed, the halted, the sick, so they become the kings. And they have the supernatural power because all of creation is groaning because every quark, every atom, all matter, antimatter, the sun, the moon, the stars, they're all waiting for us to give it the orders from on high as we herald it. And the angels of Yahweh who encamp about those that fear him and dwell in the secret of Yahweh. And the habitation we live in is the fear because it's clean. Happy is the man who feareth always. The angels of the Lord encamp, the angels of Yahweh encamp about those that fear him. Christ said he makes his companions of those who fear his father. Yeah, you liars. The Bible has you figured right out. He says you teach the fear of the Lord by the precepts of men. You watch these these panty waist preachers with, their, with no, no calluses on their hands. They don't know how to do much of anything. They're great talkers. You watch what they do to try and skate around this kind of a broadcast. You watch them squirm like worms. And you see what's going to happen to this nation as they, as they disregard the everlasting good news and they disregard the commandment of Christ to preach the fear of Yahweh, the fear of the Lord, the fear of God, the fear of Jesus. It don't matter what name they use because once, this, once the peasants, once you, the scum buckets, us peasants, us Gentiles, us goyim, once us deplorables start fearing our maker, we get the key to the house and we become the children of wisdom who are justified. And all those preachers, rabbis, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, all of them become the thieves and the robbers. Ezekiel chapter 33. They're thieves and robbers. They have to give back what they've robbed and give again the pledge. He says in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament, Christ says in big red letters, Oh, praise you, Yahweh. He says, If you come in my house any other way but through the door with the key of David, what if you come through the... If you come in any other way, you're a thief and a robber. They've been going in that Bible without the fear of Yahweh. And they are thieves and robbers. And their mouths must be stopped. They're there for filthy lucre's sake. And Yahweh's going to shut down their crap. He's going to shut off the electricity. No television. No radio. No more. Done. Done. You ain't a big ass preacher no more, and your plane, your plane is a pain, cause it ain't going nowhere. It ain't leaving the plane. It ain't leaving the tarmac. It's gonna be hanging in the hangar as a man who hangs on a tree. It's cursed with a curse.
in the book of Isaiah. Woe to the land shadowing with wings. Huh. Who's that? The Eagle, America, U.S. Corporation, liars. That sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the waters, saying, Go ye swift messengers, to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning, hitherto a nation melted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. You watch what's going to happen. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when Billy Redneck Eliyahu lifteth up the ensign on the mountains and when he bloweth the trumpet, hear ye one of the mountains. One of the mountains. Your crappy satanical calendar of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the God of Thor, Friday, the fish god named Fry. Every night I stand on the tops of the days, the mountains. And I got them underfoot. I'm in Christ. They're ashes. They're gone. It's over with. And when he bloweth the trumpet, That's the voice that cries from the wilderness. And now you know they're liars. My kinfolk, Yokanon the Immerser, the voice that cries from the wilderness is the one that cries with a ram's horn. The Jews of contemporary timing, the Gentiles, the Christians, the Messianics, Nobody cried with a ram's horn. It's a fact. I've been doing it for years. Over all seven continents, seven seas. Crying for America and the twelve sons of Jacob. You are Israel, America. You're royalty. And the devil came in and told you you're scum buckets. You're just goyim Gentiles. Don't do the Torah. Don't even look at the Old Testament. Just do what we tell you. We're the, you know, we're, they're the beasts. The subtle beasts. Got you doing all the sin. For so Yahweh said unto me, I will take my rest and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For afore the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. See, that's what I'm doing now. I'm tearing down. And we're going to build up. We have to tear down their altars, their lying altars, and their groves. They're lying to you. Nobody can gainsay this message, I promise you. No, no, I ask preachers for years to call me and we'll be, I'll be kind. I'll be, I'll be, uh, we can hold everything we say in confidence. I will swear I will do it. 
and I will teach you the fear of the Almighty. I give you hundreds of fears. I will teach you the fear. Come, let us reason. They don't even call. One man called back after two years. He was in assignment. I called him, and he called me every name there is. A fine Baptist preacher. Two years later, he called crying on the phone. He said, Brother Billy, I studied everything you said. It's all true. And I will preach the fear of Yahweh to the day I die. He said, I built my own church with my own hands. I'm a Southern Baptist. I will, I will preach the fear of Yahweh until the day I die. I'm going to put his Paleo Hebrew letters right on my pulpit. And he shouted with every bit of magnesium all. He gave it all. He emptied out all his all. And one night, with 33 million people on television, the only man in the world who listened to me and did something big. He said, I think when I preach the fear of Yahweh and tell him Jesus ain't his name, he said, I'm probably going to get all my revenue cut off, my listenership. Uh-uh. Yahweh raised up his revenue. Brother John died in his lazy boy recliner, but he was not lazy. As soon as he studied for two years and found out I told him the truth, he called up and cried and said, You told me the truth, and I'm going to preach this till the very day I die. And he did. He kept his word, and he died in his living room parlor chair. He got up in the middle of the night to commune with Yahweh and died peaceably in that chair. No contorted face and no fluids. Yahweh took him because he preached the fear as the malefactor on the right side preached the fear. Do you not fear him? And he's in paradise. Where are you going? Lake of fire? Guilt? Eternal guilt? Lake of fire is eternal guilt. Because you didn't listen to the man of Yahweh. Alright. Keep reading if you want to. Isaiah chapter, yes, Yahoo in Hebrew. Isaiah chapter 18, 1 through 7. And of course, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 33, again the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword, that's Billy Redneck, upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, popularity, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon America, he bloweth the trumpet and warn the people. So the, all, everybody listening to me, all you preachers, you got to warn them about the fear of Yahweh. Like the sword of Gideon, he sound of the ram's heart. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, I just cried with it for you, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, so you're going to die now. His blood shall be upon his own head. That's the preacher. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, don't tell him about the fear, you're in trouble. That's watchmen who are, who are patriot broadcasters, whatever you claim you are. And the people be not warned of the fear of Yahweh continually. Matthew 10, shout it from the rooftops. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. That's toilless. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So the watchmen, you preachers, get it? You're going to get a sting in your asses like you never dreamed with your sloppy agape, greasy grace, a smooth speaking, filthy lucre preaching. You're going to get it. It's coming. And I love you and I'm warning you. I don't want you to get that kind of a whooping. Thou son of man, I have set thee a watchman, he's talking about myself, unto the house of America. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm going to tell you about dogs. I told you about three years ago, I had uh, Dr. Cass Ingram on the, on the uh, radio with us. I told you there's seven different kinds of deadly sickness in the dog's saliva. You know, licks your face, you kiss them, all this crap. I told you, stay away from the, from the saliva of a dog. Wash your hands immediately. Watch what you touch. Don't touch his dish. The dish is the worst place. And now a woman 
had to with her dog, and she still lets the dog lick her now. She had the dog lick a, a little cut she had. Dog licked a cut. One of those seven deadly viruses that are in dogs got in her, they had to, all her limbs turned black, they had to cut off her arms and her legs. This is not the first time. The CDC says, yeah, these saliva viruses, these uh, contaminants can harm you, but uh, don't get rid of your dogs. Don't go to that extreme, you know. But if you have a little cut, watch it's your dog, you know, uh, doesn't lick the cut. You kiss them, stupid. Your saliva, stupid. Saliva is part of the blood. That's the blood-brain barrier under your tongue, stupid. But you can't tell you nothing. You have, you have the IQ that you deserve. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You're ever learning, but not coming to the spirit of truth. Your heart is far from him. You honor with your lips, but your heart to fear him is far from him. And you're going to fall in the death ditch. And your name will be vomited out. And that's a fact. You've been listening to ClassicRedneckRadio.com. Sam, give our information, I mean, 30 seconds. Go. Whatever you can do. Give it out. Please. 856-776-1176 is the phone number to call for getting a copy of those fear scriptures. 856-776-1176. Um, you can also visit the class... ClassicRedneckRadio.com, live 24-7 with the Psalms, the Torah, and the Proverbs. 856-776 is the number to call to get a copy of the Fear Scriptures. If you're interested in any of the products, call Dr. Gary, 877-289-7439. 877-289-7439, Redneck Wilderness. Freeze-dried food. Pastors, call 856-776-1176. Come on, let us reason together, pastors. You're cowards. Come on. The Bible calls you a coward. You're going in the lake of fire, which is guilt. If you heard this message and you're not calling me, I, I will speak to you kindly. I will speak to you with, with great patience, long-suffering patience. I will teach you as a friend, as a brother, the fear of Yahweh. And when you learn the fear of the Lord, I promise you, not only will you be, he says, exalt the fear, exalt her, she will promote you. You get elevated. It's body, it was like this giant of unbelief. It's point. a fact. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I put this together. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me see if I can get this get this properly going. I want to play this for you. This is uh, really uh, an, a very interesting praise song. Death is The king is alive. Come on now. Come on now. You know that damn lazy boy recliner. Raise a hallelujah. It means praise ye Yahweh. Look it up in the dictionary. Raise a hallelujah. Raise a hallelujah. Hallelujah! Come on! Come on, America! The peasants become the kings! Hallelujah! Praise ye Yahweh! That's what it means! Kodesh Yahweh Shua. Yahweh reigns. His mercy endureth forever. Come on, America. Come on, peasants. You 
you're going to become the king. Woo! Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Thank you for listening to Worldwide Christian Radio, WWCR, Nashville, Tennessee, USA.